What's up guys, today's video is gonna be a little bit different because we are unboxing the Synology DS423 and there's good reason behind it. So I use Synology photos to back up all my pictures, videos and stuff and this frees up my iPhone's internal storage and keeps everything accessible from anywhere all without any iCloud fees. So I've been using the DS120J, a single bay NAS from Synology for a while now and while it's been great I need more storage and redundancy. That's why I chose the Synology DS423. There aren't many reviews of this unit on YouTube so I decided to make one and I will also show you how I migrated my stuff from this one by unit to the DS423. Because believe it or not it's not as straightforward as you might think. So without further ado let's unbox this new bad boy and if you want to skip straight to the migration part check the timestamps below. Alrighty, so the DS423 arrived in a standard Synology cardboard box with their usual branding and a sticker detailing the product. I won't bore you with too much detail here, basically this is Synology's entry-level 4-bay NAS with a quad-core 1.7 GHz ARM-based CPU and 2 GB of non-upgradable DDR4 RAM. I chose this NAS because I need a decent amount of storage and that's it. If you're looking for a NAS to host your Plex Media Server or run virtual machines, this isn't the right choice. While I think you can install Plex through a Docker container, I use a separate Intel NUC for that. This NAS is purely for storage. Also, I'm not a huge fan of this retro chassis, but it will be tucked away in a closet, so I won't have to stare at it constantly. I prefer the traditional hot swappable chassis with the front doors, but unfortunately Synology's current lineup of non-plus models don't offer that option. Okay, before we do anything else, let me show you what you get with the DS423. So on the front there's just the power button and LED indicator lights. Moving to the back we have two 80mm fans and two USB 3 3.2 Gen 1 ports. By unscrewing four thumb bolts we can access the four drive bays and and there's nothing interesting inside since everything is soldered onto the board and cannot be upgraded. Alright, let's talk about the hard drives. These are the Seagate Ironwolf 4TB CMR drives and I've been using one of these in my DS120J for over a year now. And it's been smooth sailing without no issues and while my NAS is running 24-7 this drive has never let me down. Plus it comes with a 3 year warranty so choosing another Iron Wolf was a no brainer. Ok let's dive into the migration now. I will be honest I'm not an expert at this and I've never tackled a migration like this before so don't take this as a tutorial. Take everything you see here with a grain of salt. The first thing I tried was simply taking out the old hard drive from the DS120J and popping it into the new DS423. I hoped the new drive would recognize the drive, then I add another drive for a RAID 1 setup and boom, migration is done. But reality played out differently as you will see. So. I shut down the old NAS, popped the hard drive into the new NAS and I didn't get any migration option. When I clicked next, the system wanted to delete both hard drives, which I knew wasn't good. So I have stopped immediately. I checked Synology's website and found out that the drive migration from a single bay to a multi bay isn't supported. Oh well, next option. They suggested using the Migration Assistant. Sounds great, but only PLUS models and the higher-end models support that. For every other model, 
Synology recommends migration through Hyper Backup, which probably is the same as copying stuff from one NAS to another. So here is what I did. I put the old hard drive back into DS120J and powered it back on. Then I went to update and restore and exported the system configuration backup as a .dss file. Next, I installed a brand new copy of DSM on the new DS423 with the new hard drive in and configured a new storage pool with Synology's hybrid RAID and BTRFS file system. My goal was to migrate everything while retaining the host name, IP address, shared folders, and the iSCSI LAN that my Intel NUC is using for Plex. So I started with the LAN migration using Hyper Backup. That's because that's the only way how to migrate a LAN, I guess. From my old NAS, I set the new NAS as a remote backup target, but initially I got connection errors. That's because I forgot to enable rsync on the new NAS, but once enabled, it backed up the LAN onto the new NAS no problem. Then I restored the system configuration on the new NAS using the .dss file I have downloaded from the old NAS, and I restored everything except the networking settings as the old NAS was still up and running. As I found out later, this wasn't the best decision. I probably did it too early and could have waited until later. Additionally, it restored my shared folders without the data integrity features like file self-healing and data scrubbing. And this was mainly due to the old DS120J is using the ext4 file system where none of these features are available. To fix this, I deleted the restored shared folders and recreated them with the self-healing option enabled. I highly recommend for everyone to do the same when migrating from a non-BTRFS file system. Once that was done, it was pretty easy. I mounted the shared folders from my old NAS as SMB shares on my new NAS and just simply copied the data. Waited a few hours and the LAN backup and the shared folder copying were successfully completed. I double checked the sizes to ensure all the data was transferred correctly and powered off the old NAS. Next, I restored the network configuration from the .dss file and I have also restored the iSCSI LAN from the backup. After confirming everything was working, I added the old IronWolf hard drive to the new DS423, secured it with the thumb screws and bonded both network cards for adaptive load balancing. To test everything, I started a time machine backup on my Mac, which worked without any adjustments, so yeah, I was pretty happy. Finally, I added the old hard drive to the storage pool 1, where it was completely erased and added to the Synology hybrid RAID. So now the two drives are basically mirroring each other. The RAID rebuild took several hours, but now I have at least one drive fault tolerance. I still need more disk space though, so I will be adding a third drive soon. Alright guys, that's it for today, I hope you liked this video, if you made it until this point, please give me a like and I will catch you in the next video.